Welcome to the 2022 Unseen Poetry Question. Now, one thing has changed for the 2022 exams. You don't have to write about form and structure, which is great news. It means this question is going to be easy. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Right, for the poetry question, you basically need two things. You need to work out the meaning of the poem and then you need to work out the methods that the poet is using. And the next question to ask is going to be why? I mean, why bother writing the poem? The answer to that is going to be easy. There will be an idea at the beginning and at the end that idea will have changed somehow and we're going to look at that change and that will be a change of meaning. Now, I've deliberately picked a poem I've never seen before just so that I can do this in real exam conditions. The first time through, I'm going to read it to you and I'm going to explore the meaning. So my first reading is simply to work out the meaning. I'm offering this poem to you since I have nothing else to give. Keep it like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you or like a pair of thick socks, the cold cannot bite through. I love you. So the first thing I noticed is this is obviously a structural feature. Now, I don't have to write about the structural feature in the exam, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to because it's obvious that this is important and it's suggesting that this is the main purpose of the poem. He's writing it to somebody or she's writing it to somebody. Don't be sexist, Mr. Salis as a declaration of love. But there's that worrying second line, since I have nothing else to give. Now, this might be that the poet or the persona speaking in the poem is financially poor, or it might be that they're not giving enough emotionally to the person they love. Don't know yet. And I might be wrong about both of those. But when you're reading for meaning, you're making predictions in this way. Let's go to the second verse. I have nothing else to give you, so it is a pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter. It is a scarf for your head to wear over your hair, to tie up around your face. I love you. Well, this is very weird, isn't it? When he says it is a pot, he's talking about the poem and it's a pot full of yellow corn. That doesn't make any sense to me, so I'm guessing this must be a symbol of some sort, and I'll come back to that later. But I've noticed the repetition here. I've nothing else to give you, which brings us back to the poverty of the poet. Is it just a financial poverty or is there an emotional one as well? The purpose is repeated again. And so this is making me ask, does the person he's writing to need convincing? So I'm wondering if he's just not been loving enough up to this point. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost, needing direction. In the wilderness life becomes when mature. And in the corner of your drawer, tucked away like a cabin or hogan, in dense trees, come knocking. And I will answer, give you directions and let you warm yourself by this fire. Rest by this fire and make you feel safe. I love you. So this is a bit bizarre. The lover is going to come looking for love, but find the poem. When he says, treasure this, does he mean treasure my love or actually treasure this actual poem? And what's being tucked in the corner of the drawer? Is it a copy of the poem? Is it the poet's love? So I'm asking if the drawer is a real drawer or if the drawer is a symbol. You know, he could have written and in the corner of your heart. I have to look up what Hogan means and I'm told it's a wooden hut or a shelter. So I know it must be a symbol because you couldn't put the whole cabin inside your drawer. So the drawer is just another thing that's a symbol of shelter like the cabin is. Now you'll notice I don't really know what's going on here and I don't panic about that. I'm going to read on and see if things become clearer. It's all I have to give you and all anyone needs in life and to go on living inside when the world outside no longer cares if you live or die. Remember, I love you. So the poet keeps emphasising that that's all they have, but here is the change. It's all anyone needs to live. So that is, of course, the poem, but it's also the poet's love. 
Then the instruction, remember I love you, seems to be caused by the audience's doubt. So his lover probably doesn't feel loved by the lover, the poet, or the persona in the poem, but it's more than that. Here we can see that the audience for the poem believes themselves to be worthless, as though no one else in the world cares about them. Okay, I'm not trying to get to the absolute truth of this poem. We don't have time for that in the exam. I'm trying to get to an understanding of what I think the poem is probably about. That was my first reading. For my next reading, I now have to read the exam question. In I am offering this poem, how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about love? So that's really important. I'm going to remember to call it the speaker rather than the poet. And I'm only going to focus on love itself, although when I'm talking about love, I'm also going to talk about the lover, but not too much. I want the examiner to know that I'm using the lover to talk about love rather than getting distracted. Okay, in my second reading, I'm reading for methods. So I know that I'm going to focus on this repetition, and I'm also going to focus on this repetition of having nothing else to give. And obviously that's going to lead to this change in perspective that actually that is enough. That's all anybody needs to live. So although I'm not going to write about all the methods, I'm just going to pick one per stanza. So this is an obvious one to write about. It's a simile. And now that I've got to the end of the poem, I've got this sense that that winter is a symbol of hopelessness. That's what we felt down here when the lover feels nobody cares about her anywhere in the world. Now I notice that this was a symbol. I'm also going to say it's a metaphor and I have to decide what that represents. Well, I can see that it's going to warm her belly in winter and therefore it's a contrast to the winter. Yellow reminds us of sun and obviously warm. And so I'm going to say it's a metaphor for hope and the warmth of love. But this will actually protect the lover in winter, so it's also about protection. And I think those three purposes also relate back to that simile up here. I'll be able to use the same purposes there. OK, let's come down to the third stanza, what leaps out at me. Well, I struggled with this symbol here, didn't I? I could write about it, but actually I'm drawn to the line that comes before. In the wilderness, life becomes when mature. So this is suggesting that when we get older, instead of life becoming easier, it becomes a wilderness. That's really unexpected. It suggests that we all feel alone as we get older. And when we mature, we feel less innocent. I've got the alliteration of wilderness and when. So that's another technique I can talk about. This is also a metaphor. So that's another method that I'm going to be able to include. Now, I could include more from there, but it's an exam. I don't have time for all that. OK, I now come down to my ending and I'm thinking, right, which of these that I identified earlier are the most important way of describing the end? And I think it's actually going to be hope. There is hope for the future even when no one else cares about you. And it's this poem that's going to provide that hope because it's going to be the evidence of love. So my concluding idea is that love needs evidence. It can't just work on faith and belief. It needs proof of love. And so the whole poem becomes that proof that the speaker is offering to their lover, perhaps when they're separated, perhaps when the lover is full of despair, they can come back to this as proof that their lover loves them, that they are the most important person in someone else's life, even when they feel they're completely unimportant in society and the world. Now, it's important to remember that what I just wrote down on my page is not what I'm asking you to write in your exam. That's just for me to represent my thought process to you. So the first reading, I will have those underlinings where I'm reading for meaning. Those help me focus on the parts of the poem that are difficult, that I might not understand, and they help me not worry about them. Then in my second reading, when I'm looking for methods, I will also underline those bits. But I won't add all that written detail. That was just there for me to explain to you what's in my head. Well, in the exam, you don't need to explain to yourself what's in your head because, hey, you're there. You know what's in your head. I'll publish my actual answer to this question tomorrow. If you'd like to see a completely different method that my students have found really useful, check out the video appearing now.